A week-long jury trial begins this week for the 27-year-old shattered man charged with intentional child abuse resulting in death. KNEB.TV News starts right now. From your trusted source for news in western Nebraska and eastern Wyoming, this is KNEB.TV News. Presented by Platte Valley Companies, premier provider of financial services. Hello, I'm Ryan Murphy. This is KNEB.TV News, powered by Platte Valley Companies. Thanks for joining me. A week-long jury trial begins up in Dawes County for the man charged with intentional child abuse resulting in death. Riley Lenhart was taken into custody in June of 2022 following an investigation by the Shattern Police Department after his 10-month-old daughter was found unresponsive when in his care at their home. The child was taken to the hospital and pronounced deceased. Court records show 14 witnesses have been subpoenaed for this week-long trial, and if convicted, Lenhart would be facing 20 years to life in prison. Well, the former director of the Scottsdale County Detention Center has been arrested in connection to a sexual assault investigation in Wyoming. 44-year-old Joseph Gall of Morrill is charged with two counts of second-degree sexual assault that occurred while he was working as the corrections officer at the Wyoming's Women's Center in Lusk. Court documents say that the alleged assaults occurred on July 17th and 24th, and each of the felony charges carries a prison sentence ranging from 2 to 20 years if convicted. Gall tendered his resignation as director at the Gehring Jail in May of 2019 after being suspended from the post the prior month. An October 6th extradition hearing in Scottsbluff County is scheduled to have Gall brought to Wyoming to answer to the charges. Sheriff Mark Overman has assumed duties as the jail director in addition to his post as the county's top elected law enforcement officer since Gall's departure. And a 31-year-old Torrington man who was arrested on a variety of charges stemming from a March road rage incident that included him brandishing a firearm has been sentenced in Scottsbluff County District Court. Deveron Molden pleaded no contest to terroristic threats and resisting arrest charges, and in exchange for his plea, the remaining counts were dismissed. Last month in district court, he was sentenced to the 25 days in jail he had already served, plus court costs and 12 months of probation. We'll have more news right after this. Looking for free instead of fees? Platte Valley Bank can help you keep your finances moving forward with no ATM fees. Whether you're headed to the lake, the mountains, or just to the grocery store, you can enjoy the freedom of free ATM access anywhere, anytime. Platte Valley Bank. You belong here. Benzel Pest Control has been the Wyoming and Nebraska area's most committed professional pest control company. We have four generations and nearly 50 years of experience serving Nebraska, Wyoming, and Colorado, as well as certified entomologists on staff. So whether you're dealing with spiders, wasps, rodents, or any other unwanted visitors, Give Benzel Pest Control a call today for an estimate at 888-229-2128 or visit our website at benzelpestcontrol.com. Life is crazy. Pain is stressful. How can anybody concentrate with these busy schedules? Now you can. This is Ben Moravec coming to you from HydroZen, a float therapy business right here in Scotts Bluff. I'm here today to let you know we now have memberships for $49 monthly. You can guarantee yourself at least one float per month. You know how floating keeps your muscles relaxed, your joints relieved, and your brain clear to think? Now you can float at a reduced rate each month. Inquire today at hydrozenfloat.com or call us at 308-63-FLOAT. Hydrozen, unplug and recharge. Welcome back. The Scottsbluff City Council convened Monday evening at City Hall, and the biggest item on the agenda was approving the one and six year street improvement plan. Public Works Director Mark Bull told the council what the big ticket items for the one year plan will be. There's two projects for the one year, um, and that is the new development on the 28th of the line. So that will run about 300 feet. If K went through there to the west, it would look on, and then it would go to 29 to 16 already. That's behind the old depot. Um, so it'll, it'll just be a horseshoe. Um, so that one's planned for this summer. And 20th Street is the mill overlay. Um, you'll see there's curb work going on now with ADA corners, and that's because I have to do that with a new constructor reconstruct. 
so we'll get those out of the way and then this uh, spring and summer we'll do a mill over and we'll let that out to bid. Bull said both of those projects are funded already and no big projects are included for the six-year street improvement plan. And Western Nebraska Community College President Greg Dart will host the third and final open house this week to meet members of the community. The WCCA Board of Governors will host a welcome reception on the Scottsdale campus for Dart following Wednesday's board meeting, and that reception will run from 3.30 to 5.30 p.m., where the community is invited to meet Dart as well as members of the board. Dart was named president in April, and he took the helm of the college in July. Previously, Dart served as the chief campus administrator for 10 years at Utah State University Eastern. Last month, he hosted open houses at WNCC's Alliance and Sydney campuses. Better sleep and better health can be found at Western Sleep Medicine in Gehrig. Since 2006, Western Sleep Medicine has offered the lowest cost sleep testing either in their independent sleep laboratory or the privacy of your own home. You have control over your health care and your out-of-pocket cost. All insurance is accepted for a much lower cost than the regional option. If you need a sleep study, ask for Western Sleep Medicine. They've helped thousands of people over the years and want to help you. Western Sleep Medicine. Better sleep, better health. This is KNEB.TV Ag News from the FNBO Ag Desk. FNBO, the great big small bank. We head back to the grounds of Husker Harvest Days in what they call the Big Red Building. Market Journal producer Bill Dodd went one-on-one -on -one with Extension educator Ron Seymour to get some information on why soybean producers should keep a vigilant watch for soybean stem bore as harvest hits full swing. Harvest is in full swing around Nebraska. Soon those soybean fields will be picked clean. However, there may already be some pests in the field getting a head start on our producers. The soybean stem borer has been a consistent problem in areas of the state. It's a good idea to be aware of these pests when making plans for harvest. So soybean stem borers are small beetles, longhorn beetles, that will, in their larval stage, will tunnel out the inside of the stem of the soybean plant and that tunneling can cause the, that particular stem to lodge or fall over, making it really hard to harvest. And so soybean producers should be out looking at their fields for a kind of like a flagged leaf or a stem that's kind of uh, not standing quite straight or an area where they're not. And that means that you have these stem borers in there. So the thing to do then is to take out some of those stems and slice them just to see if you have any of those larvae in their feeding. And uh, if you have very much of that in your field, it's important to target those fields for earlier harvest. Even if your moisture level is a little high in those particular fields, to be able to harvest those early um, will help you in, in the long run because if you get a big wind or as those plants continue to dry down, they can all fall flat. And then that's really hard to harvest, as most farmers are aware. And so better to be able to target those and say, I'm going to get this field first or this part of that field first so that I will get the greatest amount of, of harvest or yield from that particular field before it goes on, on the ground. If you happen to determine that stem borer populations could cause problems, it will already be too late for any treatments. 
However, there are steps you can take over the next planting and growing season to ensure that these beetles stay clear of impacted fields. So if you have a lot of soybean stem borers, then you know we're more than likely they're going to be uh, rotating to corn anyway, but a couple of years of corn will certainly help reduce the amount of stem borers that are in that particular field. You know, you could go through and um, tear up the trash in a few of those areas. I kind of hate to see people do that because you know, we don't have a lot of residue behind soybeans anyway. And um, so just rotation can really help a lot in those situations. If you have a lot of stem borers in your area, you know, some people have talked about looking at making some insecticide applications to help control those. Unfortunately, the borer adults are out there for quite a while, and so it may be two or three applications of an insecticide to control those. So just kind of pay attention, see how much of your field is affected, think about those management options when you go back to soybeans. In short, these pests could populate the area enough to reach a threshold which would cause an economic loss for producers. With that in mind, it's important for producers to get a good estimate of the rate of infestation in their fields before developing a plan of action. It, we really have a hard time putting a number on that. And so if you're seeing 20, 30 percent of your soybeans being lodged, then you really want to pay attention to that and particularly those areas. And um, you know, if you're seeing about 10 percent, you can probably let it go on for a little while. But if we're seeing more than that, then you know, go out. They're, they're going to be in areas in the field because they, they tend to be in these hot spots and try to locate those, and that can be a big help too. As producers begin to roll out the combines, it may be beneficial for them to get a good look at their soybean fields in order to ensure that they're able to let that crop continue to dry down or decide if they should try to harvest a bit earlier than intended. Reporting for Market Journal, I'm Bill Dodd. October is Renewal by Anderson's United Against Cancer campaign, and when Renewal offered to pay for employees' radon testing and mitigation, several Renewal team members found radon in their homes. Deb was one of them, and she always wondered how she got breast cancer. Radon causes cancer. It's linked to Parkinson's, Alzheimer's. Radon is a killer. People don't know about radon. They don't know that what a killer it is, and they don't know how cheap it is to have it tested. From all of us at Renewal by Anderson, please get a radon test now. It could save your life. Tri-City Stormwater presents Stormwater 101, an illicit discharge. Take a look at your community calendar brought to you by Riverstone Bank.
The community calendar is brought to you by Riverstone Bank. We're local and we love our community. Tired of feeling stuck? Not sure if you are on the right track? Platte Valley Bank can help keep your finances moving forward with checking account options to fit your lifestyle and an online account chooser to make finding the right account easy. Control your financial future with helpful budgeting tools and automatic savings plans. Now is the time to enjoy the ride with Platte Valley Bank. You belong here. And finally tonight, ACH Seeds Crystal Brand Sugar Beet Seed has donated $10,000 to Gearing High School's FFA and Ag Career Pathway. DHS FFA is one of six organizations across the country selected to receive one of the monetary awards from the ACH Seeds 2023 Homegrown Giving Program. The funds will be used to support a variety of projects and efforts to enhance the quality of life across rural communities in sugar beet producing areas. Agricultural science teacher and FFA advisor Carrie John says since the donation is going towards the school's greenhouse, it will benefit all of GHS as the produce grown by the project will be used in the school's cafeteria and culinary program. Well, that does it for us this time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Stay safe out there. We'll see you here next time.